Andrew Slimman is the Senior Portfolio Manager at Morgan Stanley Investment Management, and he joins us now from Chicago. Andrew, good to see you again. You obviously were listening to our conversation. How much of this sort of last, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say last gas, but this big run heading into the end of the year, you believe is short-lived versus can continue when the calendar flips? Well, I, I think there's, I think John's right. There's no selling, and there could be some selling on January 2nd because people are waiting to book gains until next year. Could that have some short-term impact on the market? I think short-term, yeah, but... I think what's really, you know, I don't totally agree. It's just managers chasing performance because if that was the case, then energy wouldn't be the best performing sector this year because it's the worst this year. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, I think it's just money's coming into the market and there's so much money that has missed out on this rally. We're in the early innings of the capitulation of the people that sold out earlier this year getting back in. And I think that's going to continue in 2020. What's the biggest risk then out there? There yeah. has to be risk. Sure. It's, it's pretty obvious. It's that you have a combination of there's always a lag to monetary stimulus. So that the, the, you've got that. You've got the uncertainty of the trade work receding. You have USMCA. And you have the multiplier of the wealth effect from the market strong this year all could lead to a hot economy next year. And I think that's a risk for the stock market in 2021. So I think 2020 is going to be a good year, but I'm worried that things are going to get too hot and then the Fed will have to act after the election. That, to me, is the biggest what risk. What about the election itself, Andrew? I mean, I know we're, we can all agree we're early, but, but don't you think you get into February, what if you get a real progressive coming out of the early uh, preliminary, excuse me, early primaries? Is that a potential risk? I, uh, sure, and that's what, that could take some heat out of the market. By the way, another risk, and I'll get to the political side, but the, the other risk is simply that all the defensives have woefully lagged especially some of the interest rate sensitive stuff like the REITs. And I think that's because the 10 year has gone to 2%. And you have to wonder, well, how could that reverse in January? Well, maybe we'll get some weaker data or whatever. Initially, you get a reversal. But look, as it pertains to politics, the market tends to go up in an election year, but all the return comes before the election. But there will be uncertainty along the way. But one of the things I'm convinced of is there's good, I, I, who, who has come on one of these shows and said, I don't see a lot of volatility. Everyone always predicts more volatility in the next year. But what's interesting is when so much cash is on the sidelines looking for an opportunity to invest, it mitigates the downside because all pullbacks are an opportunity to invest. That's what happened in 2017. That's what happened in 2013, all pullbacks. So, I, you know, yeah, you, maybe something comes along that creates some anxiety. But, but I think that's just an opportunity for people to invest in that kind of space that, you know, shortens the downside. Andrew, it's Joe. You're in the wealth management uh, business with Morgan Stanley. Obviously, you realize that more than just the equity market is important to investors. In the environment that you're defining for 2020, what do you think that extrapolates for high yield and investment grade? Because that's been such an important part of the portfolio formula the last couple of years. Yeah, so look, I'm an equity portfolio manager. I run global mutual funds for Morgan Stanley Investment Management. So I'm not a fixed income person. I have a hard time seeing rates moving higher with the rest of the world where, where they're at. Uh, and I still are, you know, the, when people say, well, the market's expensive, I'll say expensive. How can it be expensive when the dividend yield is roughly equal to where the bond market is? I don't see rates moving higher, and I know that historically... The stock market trades at a lower dividend yield than the 10-year because of the upside you get in stock. So if rates aren't moving up, then to get back into equilibrium, I think you have uh, stocks moving up and the dividend yield coming down. So I still think equities are attractive relative to where rates are, and I just don't see rates moving significantly higher. All right, good stuff there. And that's why some of, some of the things like the REITs that haven't done well recently, I think they're kind of intriguing because they've got pretty decent yields, and as long as rates don't substantially move above 2%, people are going to come back to those areas that have lagged recently.